Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Great Big Plugin Show on Pure Mix. If you're watching on Facebook, welcome. And today we have a very special episode. We are reviewing the Mix Wave uh, Benson Chimera collection, uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun to do that. I thought it would be great to bring along one of my favorite guitar players, Mr. Adam Darling. Thank you for That's having cool. me, Mark. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Pure Mix. Definitely. This guy is uh, absolutely fantastic and uh, punches way above his weight class. So I thought this would be great to actually um, demo with live guitar to show how this uh, guitar amp plugin works and you can use it inside your DAW. And uh, yeah, to do that, we have one of Adam's band's tracks. So Adam is in a band called Honey and Blue. That's right. Yeah, and uh, that's a band here in Columbus, Ohio. They've uh, toured all over and done some pretty pretty rad stuff. You guys have played with all kinds of people and done some work with like Charlie Hunter, who's worked with John Mayer. And that's right, that's right. Lots of and uh, this fine gentleman mixes our stuff and, and we're grateful to be working with him, so. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds awesome. amazing because of yeah. him. No, um, yeah, very excited to do this today. So we're gonna be talking about the, uh, again, the Howard Benson Chimera collection. And I've got the website pulled up here. So inside of this collection, you get a bunch of different stuff. There's some amp, um, amp actual like, ugh, amp plugins, right? So you plug in and play your guitar like you're going through an amp. And then there's some pedals and there's a pretty rad reverb unit. It was which, a very rad reverb unit, yeah. yeah. Um, the so, amp, sorry. Oh yeah, go for so, it. Yeah. So the amp itself is, I've never played a Benson before. Um, hand wired in uh, Portland, Oregon, very cool stuff. But this is a 30 watt, six V six amp. I could gear out about amps or geek out about gear all day, but I really like the plugin and it feels really nice. And as we get into it, you'll notice there is a very natural gain taper from clean to, to a nice overdriven. And then we have, like I said, the reverb is very, very cool too. So I'm excited to dive in and, and show you what it sounds like. But Yeah, that's great. See, Adam says things like gain taper. So that's exactly why he's perfect for this. Well, <laughs> that's great. So yeah, just looking at the website, uh, here's here's kind of our stack. So what's that cabinet about? That's a 212 vertical cabinet. Um, that's the stuff dreams are made of. So, nice. you know. <laughs> awesome. uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, so on the top is the Tallbird Reverb, then the Chimera Amp, then the stuff dreams are made of, plus these pedals. There's a fuzz, a boost, and a preamp pedal, uh, which is cool. So you guys can check out the website. It has all the information on there. I believe there's a trial, and I did notice that it's on sale right now. So hopefully uh, when you're watching this, it's still on sale. And they also do have an EQ and compressor built into the plugin that's on the input and output path. So we'll be taking a look at that too. But uh, why don't we jump right in and pull up some uh, Pro Tools stuff here. So Let's this is a track from Honey and Blue called All In My Head. That's right. Yeah. Mixed, mixed by the amazing Mark Abrams. Ah, thanks. Um, but tell me about the song a little bit, though. Like how you guys produced it. And, uh, and well... So uh, Steph and I wrote it. Stephanie Amber is my music partner in Honey and Blue. Hi, Steph, you're watching. Um, and so we, the song is basically we wanted kind of a throwback, funky soul vibe. And uh, Mark helped us sort of achieve that with the mixing. But really sort of minimal kind of strumming guitars. The, the bass and the drums are kind of driving everything. So the guitars can do stabs and different things like that. But um, we'll give it a listen and I can just kind of play along and yeah i think we're so basically our first setting is just the amp just kind of set volume at noon uh bass and treble at noon and we can just kind of get a feel for that and then yeah cool so i have uh i have some stems pulled up in here we've got um drums bass keys there's some sound effect stuff going on stephanie's amazing vocals um but i took out all of adam's guitars so he's just going to kind of play through some of the parts uh we might do like some clean scatty stuff and then probably do like a little maybe a little solo yeah definitely, so get you to definitely. Do solo. cool okay so i'm gonna pull up the plug in here and this is what we have let me go over the interface really quick here so up at the top we've got input control there's a gate built in which is nice output control over on the right but in the center here we have this block which is our input processing this is where we have access to an eq this is pre-plug-in pre-amp uh, and then there's a compressor built into that and you can also go into output processing, which is going to be post plug-in, post effects, and all of that. So we're going to leave those flat for right now. 
In the signal chain, you can see that we've got our boost pedal, our fuzz pedal, pre-pedal, and reverb, uh, plus the amp, and then the cabinet. Now, these uh, individual components are also available as individual plugins, which I'll show you here as we scroll through the massive list. Uh, so mix way, boom. So yeah, you can see like the tall bird reverb, the preamp, the germanium fuzz, the boost, and just the chimera are all available as separate plugins as well. So you don't have to use them in the you know context of this amp plugin if you just wanted the fuzz or something like that. But uh, one of the cool things is you can change the signal path up here. You can see I can drag around these blocks and I could put the reverb, you know, post amp or whatever, but we'll just leave it on the default. And Mr. Adam, what would you like to dial in for this? You wanna see where you're at? And... So let's see where we're at just with the, the open here. And that feels good to me. A little cool. bit of hair on there. It's dry, normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't play just dry guitar, but we'll, we'll we'll use it just to get a feel. And then once we add the reverb, cool man, yeah. Reverb. Oh, and to clarify too, Adam's just going directly um, from his guitar. He has a pedal board here, but everything's bypassed at the moment. We'll get to that, uh, and then it's going directly into my Apollo. So um, what you're hearing is basically DI guitar going through the through the plugin. No no tricks in between that's right none of your fancy tricks none of my fancy tricks <laughs> all right cool yeah. so uh just stock settings you just want to roll with it from here and yeah let's try that in. just through the verse and then we can kind of see cool thing is with plugins you can uh, change things after you record them if you need more or less or whatever i yeah. always forget about that so all right cool so here we go from the top My phone lights up again Got me hoping that it's you That you're thinking about me too Let's give it up for Adam. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We I got wish sound I had effects that noise all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's a big thing for us. Yeah. We just got sound effects. So. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, at the end of every performance in a live show, you just hear bicycle horns. I would love that. You could pass them out to the crowd as they're coming in. Just give them all bicycle horns. and then. I love that. Yes. <laughs> where do you get those made? Amazon. Amazon. I'll get them on Amazon. Amazon is where everything is made. I need a bulk order of nice. 100 of them. All right, so what do you think? going through i mean it felt nice i think that's a that's a good starting point mm -hmm. um you know i think if if we wanted something maybe a little bit cleaner we could always roll the nice thing about this like i said you roll the volume back a little bit more on there and it acts like it's going to clean up and then if we needed more output gain we could do it but that gives it a little bit more um can we try that a little bit yeah yeah just, so you want to uh just pull that back to like you know two and a half or so cool and then and... all of a sudden Nice. just a nice nice clean yeah and then with that up um how responsive is it to your playing you know if you're digging in more is the amp responding to you like a live amp it is it's nice let's yeah. so let's try it here
cool. It's cool. Yeah. It was good. It's pretty wild how far this stuff has come. It still weirds <laughs> me out. Yeah. It's right? cool, though. Yeah. I used to have a kidney Line 6 pod. I don't know if you remember those. They look like a kidney. Oh, yes, I red. do. Yeah, yes, I yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. It's not hooked up anymore. Uh, <laughs> so let's check out. Do you want to check out some of the pedals, or what are you thinking? Can we do the verb? Let's do the verb. Let's do the verb. Jumping right to it. Okay. I mean, because I don't... I rarely play guitar without any reverb. Right. So cool. um, this thing sounds amazing. So here's dry. And then let's try it with reverb. Nice. Oh, you just get lost in that. Awesome. Okay, so on this reverb, let's talk about the interface real quick. We've got, uh, well, we've got a hidden switch here, so we can just turn the dry off. It's not very hidden. It's, I guess it's red on the front panel, but <laughs> <laughs> we can turn the dry off if we want to and just have a wet sound, which is going to sound like this. Cool. And then, uh, or wait, let's see, that is, is that doing what I think it's doing? Dry tube bypass. So let me turn down the dry all the way and let's hear that. That could be a cool effect. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So that's a hundred percent wet right there. And then, um, if we had that on, so the tube bypass, I'm wondering that must be another saturation point. I think so. Let's yeah. crank that up and see what happens. Uh, here you go. Adds a little more, more, more beef there. Yeah, that's fun to figure out. Cool. Okay, so there you go. Uh, there's another tube saturation circuit right on this guy, and then we've got our wet control and well. So let's hear the shortest version of this thing, and I'm just gonna leave all this as is. Uh -huh. Here you go. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Nice. Awesome. So getting to hear the the full range of all the um, the tail there, which is nice. Okay. So as we were mentioning, we can change where this is in the chain. So um, right now it's before the amp. Mm -hmm. So almost like it was a you know independent unit as it is. Hence the independent cabinet and everything. This is all you know as though it was coming out of your guitar right into this thing, then feeding the input of the amp. Do you want to play with any of that? Yeah, definitely. So I, I liken this to almost like if you had a reverb pedal going into the amp and it, it reacts differently, especially if you have overdrives or things. But the cool thing about this is, and we were experimenting with it, if you move it in between the amp and the cab, it feels like it's, if the amp had reverb, it sort of meshes with it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So here we could try it with. Uh, let me give you some. Uh, yeah. There you go. So here's before. And then you want to try after the amp? Let's try it after the amp. Just a slightly different feel, but it. I think if you were to add the fuzz or pedals or anything, it would be more consistent having the, the reverb after the amp. Yeah, awesome. And then uh, let's see what happens if we did it after the cabinet. Now, this would be kind of like putting it as a plug-in after an amp simulation. Um, so let's just see what that sounds like. Go for it. And that's cool. Yeah, that's a cool tail on there. Um, okay, so Martin, hey, good to see you again. Uh, so Martin says it kind of has a mid-low resonance thing going on there. Interesting. Nice. Uh, and he says, what is this resonance we hear? Yeah, so a lot of that can be um, just a characteristic of springs too, right? Like they always have these kind of weird harmonics that are going on and 
Right. Yeah. And it could it could be the guitar. So the setting of the amp, you know, generally when we're recording guitar, I, w- I would bring the bass down considerably. Yeah. So that that could be part of the option. Do you want to try that where we yeah. turn down the bass on the amp? Cool. Let's do it. Uh, let's go over to the amp. Do you want to leave it after the cab? Yeah, let's try that. Okay, cool. And then bring where you want to go. Just even at two, I think sometimes. Yeah. Cool. Let's try it. And if we needed, we could crank it all the way down. We could add the bright switch too if we wanted a little bit more high end to it. If it feels like it's. Go for it. I mean, that's probably on a track that would work a little bit better, too, just from not yeah. having as much low end. And as a reminder, so go ahead and do that again. And while you're doing it, I'm going to put the bass back up at zero and uh, turn off the bright switch. cool that treble control never got harsh that was neat yeah and then that was super mellow like down that was fun yeah almost fuzzy yeah okay one more thing i want to show uh so we have the reverb post cab right now i want to show it in between the amp and the cab again Mm -hmm. so i'm going to move that while you're playing okay and we're going to listen to how it kind of goes from stereo and then kind of focuses in which is interesting here we go Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Yeah. Different flavors. Good. I feel like. Yeah. I th- um, that reverb alone. Uh, I think I'd mentioned to you. We could. You could use that on. I mean, that could be pretty on vocals or drums or really anything. Yeah. It's such a cool, lush thing. So, Very Benson, cool. make a pedal out of that reverb for me. <laughs> there you go. And I would buy it. Nice. Or they'll they'll probably tell you like, well, we have this tall bird. <laughs> well, that too. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so let's do this. I'm going to turn the verb off and let's explore some of these uh, some of these pedals. All right. So um, leading up to this too, like I haven't gotten to use this plugin a ton. Adam did a little bit of research on mm-hmm. it, played through it a little bit. Um, so we're discovering some of this along with you, which is the blast of this show. And as always, guys, uh, the beauty in this being a live stream is that you can chime in in the comments, uh, if, especially we're watching the YouTube chat right now. Chime in and let us know if you want to hear us try something with this, um, you know, specifically, like if you want us to get a kazoo and try it through a kazoo or something. I actually have an electric kazoo. Do you really? I do. Yeah. I mean, you've never showed me before. I know. Like, I'm sorry. It's holding out on me. Yeah, I need to get it. It's it's not in this room though. I'd have to go dig for it. And okay, that's fine. We'll do I can put up the BRB like the be right back thing and be like, I'm gonna go find my electric kazoo. We'll see you in twenty. All right. <laughs> I'll just have Adam play for you. All right. So we have the germanium boost. So here we go. Let's see. Um, all right. So.
The next time I go in Guitar Center, I hope that the guy playing on an amp is you. <laughs> we'll just have to awesome. go to Guitar Center. <laughs> okay, um, so what are you? What are your thoughts on this? So my part? my thoughts are it's it's very cool. My understanding, although I've never had a germanium boost of all the pedals I've had or have, is if you push the amp a little bit more, generally I think that's where the germanium boost really shines. Mm -hmm. So if we could add a little bit more grit to the amp itself, you want to go to like seven? Yeah, seven? let's try that, and then we can and then we can crank it on. Even if the boost was maybe yeah, at six it should be. I mean, that's cool. It's awesome. Shout out to District Sound Lab. He says the uh, Germanium boost can sound awesome on anything. Uh, drums, bass, vocals, 808s. I love it. Nice. I love it. Uh, cool. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's uh, do that one more time, and then I'll just take it in and out. Of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It pushes the amp a little bit. It's almost like um, the whole thing gets a little bit more compressed and you can control the dynamics a little bit in there, it sounds like. Um, I want to test out what he was just saying about it on drums. Just okay. for the heck of it. Let's do it. I don't know. This might be a weird drum track to try it on, but why not? Let me just uh, play with it. Here we go. Nice. So fun to add a little bit of grit on there. Um, so I was pushing the input more because I wanted to see if I could get the pedal to break up more and do something crazy uh, for me on there and just playing with the output to control that. Uh, again, we also have these input filters and output filters too. So um, could play around with like high pass, low pass. And then obviously there's a mix knob screw. So bring your screwdrivers if you're going to use this, put this plug in and uh, you can play with that on there. So cool. Um, that's that's nice to know you can put that on different things. It's like, yeah. Like uh, Frank's Red Hot. Yeah. Just put it on everything. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, same with like the tall bird and everything too. It might be kind of crazy on drum. Well, why not? Let's try it. Why not? Tall bird. It's going to be insane and awesome. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm going to... Let's take the wet all the way down and blend it in. Here yeah. we go. Oh, oh boy. Turn off your guitar. So tell me how you feel now. Tell me, is it real now? Is it all in my head? I mean, that's behaving like I have um, I have this spring reverb that is uh, it was like a DIY unit. It's an all tube spring reverb thing that I built. Um, what's the name of that company? Wave Mod, I think. Uh, but it's super cool. But when you push low end into it, it reacts like that where you okay. can hear the springs kind of yeah. being like Whoa, too much or whatever, which is cool. Yeah. It's a vibe, though. Yeah, it is. You put that on claps or just a snare or something like yeah. that. You could. Yeah, for sure. 
Okay, let's get back to business. Let's do it. All right, so that was our germanium. Let's check out the next in line, our fuzz. So this is something that I was extremely excited to see that they have because I'm a huge Vance Powell fan. Vance Powell, to be more clear. Um, so <laughs> Vance uh, worked with like the Rack and Tours, Jack White, uh, and a lot of I don't think I have it here. No, um, a lot of that original, like the earlier Jack White stuff. The there was a pedal called the Sputnik pedal, and it was a germanium fuzz. And when I saw um, Vance use one of those in one of our peer mix sessions, I kind of like freaked out because I was like after that sound. Um, and the thing I loved about it was like how it would just get spitty. It sounded like you know you, it would sound like you could starve the thing, like mm -hmm. people used to do with the battery and all that. That's right. So what what was that all about? Were people starving batteries? Starving they were starving batteries. It's Heard they the, were baking uh, them in the sun. It's it's the bias of of the battery. If if the voltage I think drops, then it ends up getting spittier. Um, you know, nice. It's kind of fun. So yeah, um, sweet. So we we can out. try that with this. Let's see if we can get. I have it. I have very high expectations. I haven't heard this yet. I'm really. <laughs> First, what do you want me to do with the amp? Anything different? Let's keep the, the amp down? where let's keep the amp where it is because I think I'm not driving too hard. I think it's fine. Cool. Okay. We can do it. We can do a test where if if it's clean and you can see how the fuzz reacts by itself. But cool. Okay. Um, Here we go. Okay, let's play with this impedance control. So I've got the grain, the gain just like dimed. Dimed. You want to pull it back, or is it cool? I, I think I think this? it's uh, one of my favorite things with fuzz pedals is the gain. Probably, maybe like nine or ten o'clock as just a very fat boost. Yeah, um, I can't tell time. Right up a little bit more, like right there. Cool. So just for single note stuff, it's actually Let really. Me, cool. uh, I'm gonna zero out the impedance and. Yeah, let's hear that first. Go ahead. So it's just a fat solo boost is what I would use it for, which is kind of fun. So, nice. um, but yeah, if you crank it, then we can mess with the with the impedance there. Okay. So, well, let's do it. Let's do it here first. So I'm gonna start at five, and then I'll bring it all the way down to zero, and then I'll crank it all the way to ten. Just hear the wide range of it. Go ahead. Nice. So uh, in the impedance, I'm hearing almost like, you know, it's got more headroom if it were an analog piece of gear. It's got more headroom if I'm cranked up to the right and less on the left, right? Mm -hmm. uh, is that kind of how you're feeling like as you're playing it? Is it play differently? I think it honestly in the middle, it feels like it's the chewiest. And nice. so on either side of it, it feels like it's it's a little bit cleaner in different ways. Um, not as not as mushy but mushy is good with a fuzz so yeah yeah i think around around that middle area is pretty cool nice okay let's do my uh <laughs> caveman style here i'm gonna crank the gain up 
Maybe I'll drop the volume a little so I don't blast everybody. And I'm just gonna do the same thing with the impedance. Here we go. <laughs> Awesome. That's pretty fun. Don't mind me. I'll just be playing all day. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, we have the Benson preamp. So uh, talk me through what you might pull one of these up for. Well, so this could be an always on pedal, as, as we guitar players like to say. Nice. Um, and it also could be a solo boost. I love the fact that there's a treble and a bass control here because you can really, if it was a lead boost, you can kind of decide which frequencies you want so could we try it without and then just kick it on and see what it does yes hold on one second we have a question from martin so martin says uh what was that yellow light on the the germanium um so if you play a little bit i'm gonna mute the track but go ahead and play uh if i turn that on let's see i think that's just for on i thought it was changing colors on it did there we go. Yeah. Let's hear with it. Go ahead. What would you guess that's? Us. I would guess maybe it's telling us that it's that's where the sweet spot of the bias is, but I could be wrong. Nice. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's probably what it is. It does say that this pedal is temperature controlled. It could be a, a temperature thing. Okay. You know, like it might be getting hotter as you're pushing it. So okay. then that light is just telling us that it's exceeded probably like if I was guessing 130 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, that's pretty Celsius. hot. That's pretty Not hot. Celsius. Oh. All right. <laughs> Good All right. Enough. Sorry. Good Let's enough. go on to our preamp pedal. Uh, here we go. So this is our always on pedal. As you That's said. right. So could we try it off first yes. and then kick it on just to see what it does? Cool. And you're happy with the amp? Let's turn the, the volume to five just so we have just like a little bit of breakup. Yeah. Cool. And then leave our bass. Uh-huh. All right. Cool. So we'll, uh, you want me to just turn it on while you're playing? Already, it's really reactive, cool. which is cool. Yeah. So, how so? I mean, how I hit the strings, it can it gives a little bit of grit, or it can get a lot of grit just by using the dynamics of of how I'm hitting the guitar, which is really cool. So nice. that's kind of what I always look for. But um, and then once again, if you know, we could mess with the driver, we could mess with the treble and the bass, and get a, a mid boost thing if we wanted. Yeah. So cool. Okay, so I don't know if this is going to change the latency on this for you. Let me just check something really quick here. Mm -hmm. um, this plugin does have oversampling, and I want to hear that. So it looks like... What is oversampling? So it's the... I believe that the developer is District Sound Lab in the YouTube. Maybe you could explain oversampling to us a little better than I will. But basically, it is, I believe... Um, the processing is happening at a higher sample rate. Okay. And then coming back down to the same sample rate as our session. Uh, I might be explaining that very poorly. Help me out, chat. But um, typically, 
if I'm hearing something that feels hashy with a plugin, that's a weird way to explain it, but something that kind of feels digital or um, a little hashy, like there's not a lot of depth or detail or something like that. If I crank that on, it usually helps out. Okay. I'm not necessarily hearing that here. And the reason that I went for it is um, I kind of had goosebumps for a second because uh, it sounded, you know, almost like we had an amp out in the booth and we were listening back through the speakers um, specifically when we put this in. Gotcha. So I got pretty excited about it. And then I was like, I wonder if I can get it to even more of that feeling, you know, yeah, by yeah. Like cranking up the, the oversampling. So let's hear it. Yeah, so that's just messing with the oversampling a little bit. And um, I don't know if this comes through on the YouTube algorithm and everything, too, as we're going through that. But I hear more top-end detail mm -hmm. when it actually goes in. It just kind of, like, comes into focus a little bit more. Definitely. But it sounds great on 1X, too. It's not, not necessarily, like, that you have to do that. Plus, when you get it in the bed of a track and everything. But uh, I basically got excited because I thought that the thing was starting to sound like I had just mic'd up an amp. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. And that's what you want from a plugin. That is definitely what you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to try on this? So right now I've got like treble up a little bit. The bass is just rolled back a touch. Let's crank the bass all the way down and cool. the treble down just a little bit and see. Keep going maybe to like three and a half, and just see if we almost like a just another lead boost would be cool. Cool. Yeah. Let's hear it. It's just like a awesome soulful rock and roll thing like yeah what would your all on like your always on setting be like on that i would probably have bass and treble at noon and i would probably try the drive down just a little bit more sorry uh let's try our kind of like default settings so i'll, I'll just leave everything at noon uh -huh. cool go ahead That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's great. Very nice. Uh, you do have a mix knob on there too, so you can kind of decide. Now, one of the crazy things here, we can put that post amp. Oh boy. In between the oh cab. Boy. I don't know if I'm ready for Not that. That's something you've probably ever done. I've never done that before. It'd be kind of weird to put uh, in between, <laughs> put a preamp booster in between an amp and a cabinet. So. Let's get weird. All right, here we go. Let's see what it sounds like. I'll move him back and forth as he plays. Here All right. could go straight mayhem turn the fuzz all the way up <laughs> yeah just throw them all, all the way up just go nuts everybody 
Just Turn everybody. your speakers up as loud as possible right now. <laughs> so I'm sure it'll go fine. Uh, don't do that. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. This is going to be like the Back to the Future thing. Is that why you started playing guitar? You saw Back to the Future That's right. and Marty McFly. Five. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When he, especially when he's doing the move like... The Johnny, the floor. Johnny, be good. Yeah, yeah on the he floor. slides That's, across. I yeah, like, I knew I didn't want him to play yeah. guitar then. That was the moment. Sweet. yeah nice okay uh the one thing let's um let's go back to a default setting here that's uh not quite as crazy with the pedals in between the amp and the cab and we have the cab here we go 212 212 vertical stuff dreams are made of the stuff dreams are made of <laughs> okay um so in this thing let's go over the interface a little bit so same stuff up at the top uh, then we have these uh, almost tabs, I guess you could call them. So in each one of these tabs, we have uh, this one, you know, obviously signifying one. Um, we have speaker. The speaker button turns the mic on or off. And then we have a polarity button, which is going to be handy for all the options that are in here. Then we have cabinet and microphone selection. So um, some cool stuff in here. Benzer Web or Benson Webers, uh, which I'm familiar with Webers and love those. And then... Um, are these green horns, do you think? The G12? I think those are, might be generally a Celestian as a G12. Cool. Could be wrong. Nice. Okay. Forgive me if I am. And then I'm not sure the difference between top and bottom. I don't know if that's like a specially made thing for this cabinet or... I think I looked on the website. I noticed that they had different uh, impedances on them. So maybe between the top and the bottom, one's, one's an 8 and one's a 16 ohm. Oh, that's cool. Um, I'll do more research, but... Uh, I'm sure there's a cool reason why they did it. That's pretty good research. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we can select different speaker types here, and then we have our microphone selection, so everything from a 57 all the way to, looks like, uh, 84s. You got your standard, like, Royer kind of configuration. Um, tube 67, 47, those are going to be Neumanns. I can say that. <laughs> they can't, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Pretty pretty standard affair, like be a pretty nice mic locker. Okay, and then we also have access control, which I love. Um, that's one of the most powerful things with guitar micing too, is just, uh, I mean, one, just being able to move, you know. It's nice, can I grab this? Yeah, so I can grab this, move it around the speaker cone, I can play with distance, very nice. And then you can even set delays between the two sources that are on here, which is interesting probably get some cool effects with that and uh below that yeah so angle i mean that's then, crazy yeah it's pretty wild eh? that's crazy and then uh yeah panning and level and then we it appears we have four sources so there's like a quad configuration thing going on here i'm not sure what that's about because if i turn on another microphone it goes to the bottom speaker but I've got four on as well. So these are kind of overlapping right now. Okay. So I can basically put four microphones on this thing, which is a lot of microphones. That's uh, definitely two more than I would ever think to do normally. But there's some guys that are like geniuses of guitar recording. And is that, is well. that the joke? How many mics does it take to record a, <laughs> a guitar track? It's pretty good. It is now. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me go back to a default setting here, and we'll just play around with this a little bit. You want to play along with the track a little bit? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. Here we go. Uh, what would you like on? You want to do, like, the boost, the fuzz, the pre? Let's do the, the pre, reverb? the reverb, and the amp and cab. Yeah, let's do that. Nice. Where do you want the reverb? In between the amp and the cab? In between, and if you could turn off the dry, that dry switch there. Uh, which that, one? The switch to the left there, this boink. Guy? Yep, boink. perfect. Nice. And then, did, I'm sorry, so you said pre and the reverb, right? Did That's you want it. anything else? Okay, cool. Yeah. Maybe if we go crazy with the lead later, we'll pop a fuzz on. But, nice. Uh, 
and stock settings all that's, up the middle great that sounds great yeah cool i feel like that's the that's a cool thing if it if it sounds good out of the box then right. you can just start playing with it and it makes subtle adjustments as you go but nice okay so i'll really from the top here do a playlist like a responsible adult and here we go So sorry, I shut off your spring there so I could hear what was kind of happening with oh, the mic. Oh man, I lost it there. <laughs> I'm no good without spring. <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, going through, I definitely heard um, you get kind of a little bit of a brightness boost with the, the Celestian. Thing. Cool. Yeah, it's kind of neat. So cool options. Uh, the mic selection worked as advertised. Felt great. Um, yeah, and it's just nice to be able to move things around and find a tone. So. My takeaway with this was it sounded great the whole time that we were playing up until we even dove into this. So it's cool that you can get tweaky, but you don't have to. Right. You know I mean? Yeah. Right. Sweet. And the panning seems really cool. Like everything being post as if you wanted something to feel like it was out of the way. Yeah. Um, nice. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. cool. Um, sounds like a paid commercial. <laughs> I mean, it's good. That's yeah. why we're here. But... Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that is kind of one of the things with the show too. Like, um, I don't usually do episodes on it if it's something that like we're just gonna get on and bash because it doesn't feel very productive. Right. So you know, we we did give it like a quick listen before, and it you know Adam would have definitely said like, I don't know if I can do that. You know, so that's cool. Uh, so yeah, it does it does feel really nice. Um, for some gigs that I do uh, when we play duo gigs, I'll use a Dream sixty five Universal Audio thing. That's and that was kind of my first dip into digital amp processing, and I and was surprised how that feels. And this feels really cool too. And like I said, with just the gain of being able to really dial in just a little bit of grid in the amp, is kind of it's fun to have that yeah. that ability. Yeah, definitely. It's sensitive to that. So. Yeah, and even if you're um, an extreme like you know, die hard, like gonna play my amp on every record or whatever. This is still something that's, that's really handy. Like, you know, if you go on vacation and you bring your guitar or whatever, like it's kind of nice to be able to have something to just like plug in and go with. 
or um, in my case as a mix engineer, a lot of times like I'll get DI'd stuff and sometimes the choices are insane or like it just won't mess with the track in a certain way or whatever. So yeah. you have to kind of dig in and, and play around with it too. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. so. Uh, and like District Sound Lab said, you can put put the boost on. I'm sure the, the preamp or the fuzz or anything would be cool on different tracks. So yeah. just a matter of getting the right level of things, but. Definitely that reverb too. That was the whole reason I built like my my rack like mod wave tube spring reverb thing was because I wanted to use it as insert reverb because mm. I wanted a good spring. Definitely at that time, spring reverbs didn't feel great to me in the box. Right. And right. That was you know probably 15 years ago or something like that. But like yeah, yeah it's it's come a long way. And this one sounds super cool. This sounds very good. Yeah. I will in not, stereo too. I that won't was lie great. to you. Yeah. yeah. We should probably try this on a vocal at some point. We should try it on yeah, vocal. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I think that we've done it. Am I forgetting anything on this? Do you want to try uh, with with a pedal just to see? Oh, how it yeah. Does? Yeah. Let's do that. So, Adam has this whole bag of tricks here. So, why don't we bag show him tricks. what you got in the bag of tricks? Adam, what's your favorite thing after shows that happens when, when people come up after? Where do they do I, the uh, pedal board inspection? Some people, I like when people do the when pedal do board inspection. Deal. Yeah. Usually it's asking me if I like my guitar. Right. That's, that's Here, let's, uh, uh, we'll flip it this okay. way, kind of. Oh, Why yeah, don't you yeah. tell everybody what you got on this thing? Okay, so I am a, a, an overdrive-aholic. And uh, so I have, this is my King Tone Fuzz that I love. Mythos 210 Drive. Mythos is amazing. This is the newest acquisition. It's the Barber Electronics Game Changer. Game Changer, which is a very cool pedal. I have too many things. Um, but really, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this through. This is a harmonic tremolo that I really love and use a lot. And with this style amp, it, it can kind of give like a little bit of a Jimi Hendrix kind of grit vibe. So this adds to that as, as far as just an ambiance and a movement. So, nice. um, yeah, anyway, it's... Yeah. Too many things. But. So you brought this along so that we could see how this reacts to pedals. Yes. Yeah, sweet. So let's, let's do, do it. it. Yeah, nice. I'm always amazed by, uh, like, the plug-in market is insanely oversaturated, right? Like, there's just a billion plugins, And the same is true for guitar pedals. So I always, like, I don't know, just huge kudos to people who make guitar pedals and plugins because it's a, it's a lot of competition out there. I mean, I'm I'm always looking to buy more pedals. So yeah, there you go. Um, and same with plugins. All right. So settings wise, do you want to turn off this preamp? Let's turn off the preamp, and just keep the amp there. And the verb maybe bring the verb down just a little bit in terms of the the wet control just down maybe to like. I'm gonna start you okay. without verb. Okay. Let's cool. just hear how it reacts. So let's... sounds pretty good to me um, but that that's a harmonic tremolo and we can add a little bit of uh, like here would be a, an overdrive change So that last one was the game changer. That was the game changer. That got punchy, really punchy, fast. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And here's the. We'll try a fuzz real quick, if that's all right.
Now you can have your reverb. It is very dynamic and yeah, so pretty cool. I don't play too much, but I could just keep playing. <laughs> oh, that's great, dude! Awesome. Well, cool. I think that we've done it. I think we've done it. I yeah. think Benson has done it. I think Benson has done it. Yeah, yeah. and Mixwave for and helping Mixwave, to bring this yeah. to life yeah. in a plugin. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and I think District Sound Lab is Mixwave. I think so. Shout out to you for joining and uh, tagging along with us here. Thanks. Um, so yeah, guys, this is uh, the uh, end of the road. This is the Benson Chimera Collection. Looks like it's on sale right now. Go hit that up. Uh, you can check it out, mixwave.com. And uh, Mr. Ad oh, I'm not even showing that screen, but that's fine. Um, where can people hear more about you and your music? People can hear us uh, at honeyandblue.com, any, anywhere at Honey and Blue. And uh, we would be honored for you to check out our stuff. And once again, Mark is mixing everything. So, oh, thanks. You're the man. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and if do you you do session work as well? I do a little bit of session work. If yeah. somebody would like to uh, have some guitar on it, I'd be happy to do it. So nice. Um, nice. Let's see. Uh, Honey and Blue Music at Gmail dot com is probably the best best way to do that. But cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. Sweet. And if you guys are ever in Columbus, they're always playing. Uh, amazing shows they sell out very quickly so keep an eye on their website and all that too so all right um guys thank you so much for watching and i'm just looking one last check for anybody wanting us to try anything we got the yellow light thing so i think we're good uh yeah and shout out to steph for the amazing vocals on the tune there you go steph cool. <laughs> awesome all right guys thanks so much for watching we'll catch you next time thank you. bye